Good afternoon, sixth graders. It's another one of the videos for your directions for Thursday, since I'm not there in class. Hopefully this one will be wildly successful, like my last one, so I can get even more subscribers to my YouTube channel. I have for you here on the screen the document that you're going to get from Google Classroom in a moment. Do not open it yet. Just watch and listen to the directions here first, and then you can go through and open up the lab. On the document, it has the link to the lab. When you click on the link, and it takes you to the website, click on the little five down here, and that'll open up the FET simulator here for you. If it doesn't already have this button checked that says show values, please check that button for show values. When you go through the lab sheet, all the directions are on this lab sheet, so it should be pretty self-explanatory to you. Okay, Make sure you're typing a hypothesis out for uh, number three here for question one and two. There's two different hypotheses again. Make sure you're typing those out in full sentences so that they make sense with enough detail. And then you just kind of follow the directions. Okay, There's just really one kind of weird thing that I want to show you with this, and that has to do with when you're looking at these values. All right, now first of all, it tells you in the directions that you're using the dot in the middle of the sphere here as kind of your marking place. So if it says to move them five meters away, that means five meters from the center of that sphere. Okay? The other thing you'll notice is that the numbers here for the force are extremely small. And the reason they're so small is because these are small objects. It's only large, massive, massive objects like Earth and planets and the sun that have really, really strong gravity. So this is a tiny, tiny number. So it's going to be really hard for us to keep track of the data and not make mistakes with all these zeros. So here's what I want you to do, and I tell you this in the procedure, is that because the masses of the objects are so small, to make it easier, I want you to multiply all your forces by 1 million. So you're going to multiply all those forces by 1 million. So you'll take this number, multiply it by 1 million to get that value, multiply this by 1 million to get that value. You know how many zeros there are in a million, six. So in other words, you're moving the decimal six places, three, four, five, six. So the number that you would record would be 0 0.026301. Okay, that's the number you would use so that they're a little bit easier to work with. They're still really small, but they're just easier to work with. Just kind of pay attention here, a couple things. Number five, graph. Number six, graph. So there's going to be two graphs for you to insert again. Okay, so make sure you're doing that. Everyone has their own doc. Everyone's making their own graphs. And then there are some questions to go through here at the end, seven through ten. If you finish this before class ends, you can go ahead and hit the turn in button. This is, uh, this is going to be due tomorrow. So if you don't finish it in class, you have to finish it on your own for homework tonight. Um, and then we'll go through it tomorrow in class on Friday when I come back. And I also will have your test for you to go through your test with you on Friday. All right. Make sure you're working efficiently and you're working well together. You can even, if you want to work in groups of uh, two or three, you can. You can pick your groups. Uh, if you want to work on your own, you can work on your own. So make sure you're getting your work done and behaving in class. And good luck on the lab. See you tomorrow.